Are you tired of clients constantly overstepping their bounds and taking advantage of your good nature? Well, what if I told you that there is a way to set firm boundaries without damaging your relationships? Well, stick around to discover how to manage client expectations like a seasoned pro. Hello, heroes, and welcome to the Cam Club podcast. I'm Warwick Brown, your favorite cam coach. This is the place where busy key account managers like you come to get tips, tricks, and all the latest trends. Whether you're looking to boost client revenue, improve customer retention, or just navigate your career, I've got you covered. It is so important to establish clear boundaries with clients. I've talked about it many times on the podcast, but through no fault of their own, many times, we give our clients the wrong signals. We teach our clients how to treat us. And often through our eagerness to please, through our desire to help them get the best absolute service and to make sure that they are working optimally with our products and services, we jump through hoops, we jump through rings of fire, we do triple backflips and somersaults, and now our clients come to expect it. Or, you know, sometimes we unfortunately have those very demanding clients that bought the bought the brass package and suddenly expect platinum. You know, they're constantly pushing and nudging you to do more than what they've paid for or go beyond what is reasonable, you know, that they know it and you know it. So number one, you've got to define those clear boundaries. There is nothing you'll be able to do to enforce boundaries if the clients don't realize there are any. So are any of your clients overstepping the mark? Well, let's talk about some things that they may be asking you for that are red flags for me. One is scope creep, right? They're asking for additional features or services that were not included in the original contract, but they don't want to pay any more. Or they're constantly requesting frequent changes or additions or little tweaks that it's almost impossible to keep up with where you started and where you are now. So somehow you found yourself doing more because they've just done these little incremental, insidious little you know, requests that have suddenly cumulatively blown out. They're expecting immediate responses. They want instant replies to emails or to phone calls. They will expect you to answer out of hours. They want urgent attention for everything. There is nothing that they ask you for that is not an emergency. You don't have any other clients as far as they're concerned. They're asking personal favors you know, that aren't really related to the business relationships, such as uh, advice on personal matters or introductions to your personal network, things like that, that you're like, hmm, this is getting like a little bit weird. I don't want to know about the problems you're having at home with your husband, you know, <laughs> not really related to business. I'd rather we kept that separate. Workarounds, you know, requesting temporary fixes instead of being patient to wait for the root cause to be addressed or not channeling the problem through the correct channels. They're, they're escalating to you as the first point of contact or asking you to manually handle tasks that should be automated or streamlined through, through established processes. I had a client, they wanted, we had two different reports and there were information in both of those reports that the client wanted in one report. And they asked me to combine the reports. Now, stupidly, I said yes. Well, that was the bane of my life. I did that report merging for something like two years. So I said, enough is enough. But I should have just said no. If the client wanted some merged reports, let them do it themselves. They must have some interns or some people in finance or even themselves that can do some basic VLOOKUP formulas. And regardless, not my problem. Get somebody on Upwork to do it. Free consulting. I've had this as well where we have a consulting arm. We have a consulting value proposition and a product but they're kind of trying to seek this detailed strategic advice and strategic consulting and get me to do stuff and do work that really falls into the a consulting bucket, but they don't want to pay for it. They don't want to pay for that time and expertise. Uh, bypassing procedures, they're trying to always circumvent established procedures because they don't work for them, right? They're bypassing the normal process because, hey, they would rather do it their way uh, and usually through you as an account manager, then go through the appropriate service channels. Excessive meetings that they request frequent meetings or just that they're really lengthy meetings or I've had clients that insist on a personal meeting. A client of mine, we had this tiny little problem and they were like insisting I come to the office to discuss it. Warwick, you need to be in our office. I expect you here this afternoon to come to this meeting. So I had to drop everything. I raced to the meeting and honestly, it was over. we could have done this over a phone call, but that was their style. They used to do this to me all the time and every time I'd jump. Now that was then, this is now. Now there would be firm boundaries in place. I would absolutely not be racing to the city to have an in-person meeting over something as simple as that particular issue was. And another one that I have come across many, many times is that you start to do their job that they ask you to handle tasks that really should be their responsibility, such as uh, entering data, running reports, other admin work. I've had clients do that to me lots of times, and a lot of times I've said yes. So they're just a handful, a handful, a smattering 
of the kinds of things that might indicate you need to reset some expectations with your clients. All right, so let's break it down how you actually go about doing this. Number one, you can't enforce boundaries if you haven't defined them and if you haven't communicated them. So my number one piece of advice, create a scope of work document, right? List all of the deliverables and timelines, include responsibilities and limitations, uh, and also where things should go. So let people know who does what for what, because sometimes that's actually why clients are coming to you because your organization is so complicated or things just haven't been communicated to them, so they don't know where to go. So that can be a big help. Number two is you've got to start enforcing those processes and workflows. I know it can be challenging, especially when you have a difficult customer, but don't implement workarounds. You have got to stick to established processes for consistency. You have got to redirect clients to the appropriate departments. And if things aren't working as tempting as it might be, I know I have been there so many times, but don't take on more work by patching things up with your little fixes because you're not happy with how the business has responded to your request. You tell the client, I'm sorry, that's the way it's going to work for now. I have sent this to the appropriate departments or to the product team or whoever. And if and when things change, I'll let you know. Now, clients aren't going to get it the first time around, right? You're not just going to send them a list of boundaries and then they're going to remember all of them, right? So it's going to need some positive reinforcement. You're going to have to redirect clients to the correct workflows, that's fine. You provide clear instructions and resources, you follow up to ensure clients use the correct processes. And if they come to you the first time, I think it's okay to do it for them and say, listen, just on this occasion, I'm going to handle it for you. But remember next time, this is the correct workflow. So you have let it slide the first time, right? So it's like a warning. The next time they come and ask you the same thing or they you know, uh, circumvent the workflow, you're in a great position then to say, listen, I know I told you this last time, but we really need to enforce this because blah, 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 blah. I'm going to transfer you now or here's the email to contact that person, whatever it might be. But be disciplined, right? It's, it's no, no worse than a screaming toddler that wants their own way. I guess this leads me into number three, which is one of the hardest things to do is to maintain those professional boundaries because it's so easy to crack. It's easier just to do the damn thing than it is to, you know, fight the client or resist. Be strong. I got you. I'm in your corner, right? I support you. Empower clients to use self-service resources. In this day and age, there's so much that clients can do themselves online through your own portals. Make sure they use them and train your clients on the correct escalation path. There's a great tool that I just used the other day actually called Guide, G-U-I-D-D-E dot com. And the Chrome extension you'll need to install and then it will record your screen as you are doing whatever you're doing. It will capture the screenshots. And then the bit that I was fascinated with is that it automatically turns it into a training video. Now you can either just use AI powered voices to do the explainer, or you can upload your own voice recording. So I just recorded like 60 second clips explaining the thing that I was trying to teach and done and it looked really slick, it was brand consistent, and I was really, really impressed. So that's worth doing if it's something that comes up all the time that you're constantly having to teach clients about. But if it's a one-off, use a video screen sharing tool. The one that I use is Drift, and I love it, and it's perfect for recording quick videos, sharing your screen, and explaining to something, and then it actually has a little copy-paste where it'll give you a GIF of your video, as well as the link, and you can pop that into an email and send it over to a client. Easy ways to train and do that positive reinforcement to make sure your clients don't overset boundaries and follow those self-service paths or the correct paths in any case. Don't be an instant responder. I have talked about this so many times in so many episodes of the Game Club podcast. You should know by now if you're a regular listener, you want to make sure that you treat the requests with the urgency and the responsiveness that they deserve. If it's not urgent, don't respond urgently. So your clients know what to expect and build in some buffer, right? Sometimes I could do something in five minutes, but I know it's not urgent. I'm trying to do deep work and I'll tell the client, listen, I'll get it back to you tomorrow. Or sometimes I'll say, earliest I can have it to you is next week. I'm going to set a time that suits me. And then if the client's particularly anxious to get something earlier, they'll come back to me. But nine times out of 10, in fact, 99 times out of 100, they're more than happy with the timelines that I set rather than just assuming they need everything urgently. And number four is proactive communication. The more you update and check in with your clients, it builds trust, it builds transparency, it prevents misunderstandings and miscommunications, it keeps projects on track and within scope. You know what, I had a client once who called my manager and said, I want to change account managers. I can't, I don't think I can work with Warwick anymore. And I was shocked, surprised, furious, because I thought we had a great working relationship. I gave it some thought And you know what the thing was? She had asked me to do something about some setups and configurations in the tool. And I said, sure, I'll get to it. 
And I hadn't contacted her for two or three days because I thought, oh, what's the big deal? I'll do it when I do it. And it's not that urgent. And she was like, obviously sweating on it and fuming and, you know, pacing the the office. And she called my manager and said, take work off my account. And I was like, you know, what? I'll fix this. So I immediately did the thing that she wanted me to do. I went back to her and said, I apologize for the delay. I should have kept you informed. But just to let you know, here is the configuration update. It's all done. It's all been deployed. Everything should be fine. If you need anything, let me know. I'll check in with you again on Friday to make sure that everything's working as you expected. I didn't mention that my boss had said anything. And you know what? Within half an hour, she had called my boss and said, oh, I've changed my mind. I'd like to keep work on the account, please. So that was a lesson learned for me. And that is what I'm trying to talk about when I say about updates and check-ins, making sure that you're not leaving your client hanging for information or assuming they just know that you're doing stuff and that they should just be waiting to hear from you because that usually makes them more anxious. So keep an eye on your client activity and feedback. Schedule regular check-ins to discuss progress and potential issues, or at the very least, make a diary note in your calendar to follow up and drop them a note or check in on whatever's going on so that you can at least be sure that you're on top of everything. And surveys and feedback forms can be a useful tool as well, depending on the client and the type of service that you have. So, you know, wrapping things up, you want to be consistent and fair in enforcing the rules. You want to communicate changes and updates proactively. And you want to show, you know, appreciation for your clients that they're cooperating and that they understand that these boundaries are not in place to make their lives difficult. It's to make your job more effective so that you can deliver the meaningful stuff to them and get the deep work done and coordinate those resources and come up with those strategies and ideas that are going to help them make better use of your product, that are going to optimize the way that they work with you, and that's going to help deliver bigger, more meaningful results. So heroes, for those that have listened to the end, I have got a client-friendly scope of work template that you can download. You can catch those at the show notes on tkcpodcast.com slash 043. Now, now, don't just cut and paste it, right? This is a template that I've designed that's going to give you a bit of a framework, a bit of a guideline, a bit of a place to start to then adapt it for your own situation and share it in a way that's going to be easily understood by your clients. It's not going to feel like at a, a legal document. It's going to be a nice and simple way to say, hey, here's what I do and why I do it and the rules of engagement. Remember, heroes, it is absolutely vital that you manage client expectations for a healthy work-life balance and also to be more effective to produce better results, to make a greater impact. So my challenge to you is to implement one boundary setting technique this week and observe the results. And let me know how you go. I would love to hear from you. You can come and connect with me over on LinkedIn or you can drop an email to hello at thecamclub.com. Thank you for listening, heroes. Do me a favor and share this episode with a colleague or a friend if you got some value out of it. And until next time, bye for now.